The Cardinals do not add Trevor Story, and they have bad news on the pitching front as Jack Flaherty has been sidelined. Where do the Cardinals go from here? As spring training continues to ramp up, we're talking about all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. Stay tuned. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked on Cardinals for Monday, March the 21st. We are back to five episodes a week, Monday to Friday, here on the Locked on Podcast Network. As it is officially official now, as five days a week, we are coming to you on Locked on Cardinals. Thanks for tuning in today, making Locked on Cardinals your first listen of the day. My name is Lucas Smith, host of the show. Twitter handle can be found right here in the bottom left corner of the YouTube video, as well as on at LJ Fastball on any of your podcasting platforms. If you're listening or watching, thanks for tuning in. This episode is brought to you in part by Bet Online. It has you covered this season and more prop size and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. Feels very good to be back to five episodes a week. Super excited to bring them to you each and every day here on Locked On Cardinals. If you have not already subscribed, to the Locked On Cardinals YouTube channel, please do so. We are skyrocketing up to 744 followers or subscribers at last check, excuse me, and continue to subscribe and listen to your podcasting platforms free everywhere that you can find it. Leave a rating on iTunes or Spotify as well. If you feel so inclined, it's going to be a fun ride this season here on Locked On Cardinals. We have some bad news to talk about, all things considered, on this exciting Monday. Hope your weekend's treated you well. My dad was in town with me this weekend, so that was super-duper fun. Uh, hope your weekend was as fun as mine was with, with my dad. But we do have some, some pitching woes to get to. We're going to talk about pitching. We're going to talk about the shortstop position. And then just kind of spring training in general. The spring training can be a time that, yeah, that you either learn a lot about a player, maybe you don't learn anything about a player. Uh, but it, it's an interesting way to watch baseball just because – don't really matter, but to some guys, they really do matter. Just a balancing act. So we'll talk about that coming up here in just a bit. But we're going to start with the pitching because I think pitching is the most important aspect of baseball. It's my favorite aspect, so maybe I'm a little bit biased. But nevertheless, I've always been in the state of mind, and that you longtime listeners that have been here for the year and a half, close to two years that I've been doing this, know that I love some good pitching. So I think it's important that we start with the pitching and Jack Flaherty has been sidelined um, for, for two weeks with, with, um, with something we need to clarify, something that, that he felt the need to clarify, I guess I should say. Um, so he was he, he had a uh, PRP injection, according to this story on MLB.com. Uh, that is a platelet-rich plasma injection, uh, which was doing, which, which was, the, the purpose of it was to deal with the um, inflammation um, in, in that shoulder, he also confirmed Jack Flaherty did the pre-existing slap tear, which is a superior labrum anterior posterior, essentially, according to this article in MLB.com, where the shoulder meets the biceps. If you want more on that story, Joe Trez, I wrote that story uh, yesterday on Sunday. So Jack Flaherty sidelined, two weeks minimum, and uh, Alex Reyes also sidelined as well. So it's two pictures. We talked about it last week. That That's two pictures that in some way, shape, or form, we're going to affect this pitching staff. Flaherty, obviously, as the likely opening day starter. I think that the opening day starter likely falls to Adam Wainwright now. But even Alex Reyes, who was going to be, in my opinion, an integral part in the bullpen, maybe not necessarily the closer again, but was going to be a big part of it, especially with the stuff that he has. So now we, we realize, or now we're able to see, at least in my opinion, why the moves are made to, to add depth to the pitching staff for the St. Louis Cardinals. You have two start two two guys are going to be out, and the Cardinals signed two guys in the offseason. Now, you can never truly replace an, an arm like Jack Flaherty. You can never truly replace an arm like Alex Reyes, even though both of them have their flaws, as every player does. But I think that this is that this is why we saw the depth move made. The depth moves plural, made with the, the Whitgren signing, the Verhagen signing, even the Zach McAllister signing, 
who they, they've all pitched this weekend so far in spring training games. Cardinals playing at, uh, I believe it's five central six local over there in Florida against the Washington Nationals. We'll talk about that as well coming up in just a little bit, but now, now it's, it becomes a question. Uh, who, who, who is the, who's the fifth starter? Because we're going to talk about them. you got Matthew Libertor, Drew Verhagen, Jake Woodford. It's kind of my three names that I'm looking at to say, okay, the, these guys might be in the starting rotation come opening day. They might start the fifth game of the season. And there's an article in, in The Athletic that said that the Cardinals are, are very confident in what they have. They just don't know who's going to fit where, but they are confident in their rotation and that they can fill that fifth spot internally. You could, we're all going to have our opinions on that, on that statement, on that thought process. I'm sure most of them will be negative opinions just because of what, what I've seen on Cardinal Twitter that a lot of guys really want to go external, which I get. And I think that there's still time to make a move, to, to get a starting pitcher. And I don't think it would be totally unworth it either. Because, yes, when Flaherty comes back, theoretically speaking, you'll have your five starters. As I've talked about extensively on the show, it'll be Flaherty, Wainwright, Matt, Michaelis, and um, – and Hudson, somewhere in that order. I'm pretty confident in one and two and three. Michaelis and Hudson can fit in at the end there. The, the point being that there, there's somewhat of an argument to me, why get another frontline starter when you're going to have five starters anyways? Well, because you're going to have the possibility of injury. And if you can add a one and get rid of a five, or a, a one-type pitcher, an ace-type pitcher, why would you not do that? especially when you had the prospects and the capital that the Cardinals do have to be able to get a Sean Manaya or a Frankie Montas, two names they've been linked to um, in, in various reports. Nothing really specific yet, but those are two names that, that, that are on my radar. Talking to Jason Burke of Locked on A's over the last couple of days as to what a trade might look like. We'll be going in-depth on those kind of options tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. But the main point I want to make today is that it's not too late to make a move, and I think it'd still be worth it to make a move. We saw the starting rotation depth get tested last year. And overall, in my opinion, it probably failed. And we're already seeing it get tested this spring training. Three games in. Not even not, not even three games in. Excuse me. Already seeing it getting tested. Why, why let it get tested anymore before you add to it? So we'll talk about that. Let me know what you think. If they should go after Sean Manai, if they should go after Frankie Matas, if they should go after even a reunion with J.A. Happ, which has also been reported. But who... Regardless, they need to still make another depth move, in my opinion. But the move now turns to taking the starting rotation spot because the internal options are intriguing at best, in my opinion. The three names that I'm kind of looking at, Matthew Libertor, Drew Verhagen, and Jake Woodford. Jake Woodford is somebody last year that stepped in nicely for the most part, uh, definitely had his ups and downs, but somebody that, it, at least in terms of, of experience-wise, is going to have some experience in going a full season. Last year, he made 26 appearances, eight of those being starts, had an ERA of 3.99 in 67 and two-thirds of an inning, ERA plus at 98, so not terrible, but not you know right below average, two points below average. Whip was a little high at 1.35. Uh, most of that was due to the 3.3 walks per nine he was giving up. Kept the ball in the park, though, less than a home run for every nine innings. So would it be the worst thing in the world for Jake Woodford to be your fifth starter come opening day? No. Are there better options internally? There's an argument to be said, no. Maybe Oviedo comes back out or Casado or uh, or even, like I said, Libertor or Verhagen, which we'll talk about here in just a moment. But it would not be the, the, the end of the world, in my opinion, if Jake Woodford were your fifth starting rotation option because he has proven that he is, at least has the capability of getting through a full season, being remotely healthy, being somewhat productive. Because, you know, if, if a fifth starter doesn't really need an ERA below two. They need an ERA below four, and that's exactly what uh, Woodford gave you last season. So in 26 games, eight of those being starts. Drew Verhagen is somebody that, that is intriguing to me and somebody that, that pitched in yesterday's game against the New York Mets, the one that the Cardinals won 6-4. to four. And if you missed Dylan Carlson's absolute bomb, in that game, I know that spring training stats are something to be kind of debated whether or not they matter, but I know it does matter. That's 420 foot home runs, and that's exactly what Dylan Carlson gave the Cardinals yesterday. It was a bomb. So if you haven't haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, but getting back to the pitching, Michaelis and Verhagen both pitched yesterday. Two starting rotation options, in my opinion. Michaelis' stat line was okay: three strikeouts in two innings. 
Verhagen looked solid. I was able to catch some video of him more so than Michaelis in my prep for this. And I thought he looked really good. Struck out Lindor, struck out Alonzo, struck out Robinson Cano for his three strikeouts in his two perfect innings of work. Definitely not somebody that I even remotely thought would be a starting rotation option for the St. Louis Cardinals. But here we are, and now that, that he actually is. When you go to Matthew Librator, he pitched in Friday's opener, uh, two innings, two hits, an earned run, struck out three. Um, he is somebody that I think is going to need a little bit more seasoning in the minor leagues, in my opinion. I think he's somebody that, that just needs a little bit more control, a little bit more, a little bit more fine tuning for Libertor. But again, those three players are solid options. You even have Whitgren that could. Aaron Brooks had a very productive um, appearance in the game one of spring training. You've got options for that fifth starter's role. And again, just to close up the point, this is why those depth moves are made. For this exact reason, for when Flaherty or anybody else got hurt, you could fill somebody in. Now, when you're taking out the context and you say, would you rather Jake Woodford, Drew Verhagen, or Matthew Libertor, or Sean Manaya as a starting rotation option? Yes, you would say Sean Manaya or Frankie Ma- or somebody else in the free agent or trade market, likely. But if the asking price for Manaya or Montes are too high, if they want a Nolan Gorman or a Jordan Walker, I'm sorry, but in my opinion, that's not happening. Even if you get both, that's not happening in my opinion. So these depth moves, the ones that the Cardinals made that They've made in the past that even I kind of, kind of balk at sometimes proven to work in the past and they could just be successful here in the present day as well. So let me know what you think on the current starting rotation options and what the Cardinals need to do to truly improve that. Um, if you see them making moves, because if they make a splash move, that would surprise me. It really would. So uh, a splash move that the Boston Red Sox made yesterday was signing Trevor Story to a mega contract. And yes, this might sound salty or might sound like, oh, just because they didn't get him means I'm happy. But I'm borderline happy the Cardinals did not get Trevor Story. And I'll tell you why coming up here in just a moment. And I know that, again, that might sound crazy based on what I've talked about on the show sometimes. But stay tuned for the answer to that question. But first, college basketball tournament is finally upon us. We're into the Sweet 16. For all of the latest odds, contests, player props, and more, BetOnline.net is the number one source for all of your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all of your sporting and wagering information needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and actions. BetOnline is where the game starts. A lot of trades have been happening this offseason and including a free agent signing most recently by the Boston Red Sox and Trevor Story. He signed shortly after Carlos Correa signed with the Minnesota Twins. What a blockbuster. That was specifically, if you want more coverage on either one of these, head over to Locked on Twins or Locked on Red Sox. But with the, the trades that have been happening, you want to be making sure that you're listening to Locked on MLB Prospects, uh, where Lindsey Crosby is a prospect encyclopedia going deep on the MLB stars of tomorrow. To head over there for a prospect list and things of that nature, breakdowns. But I want to talk about Trevor Story because he is somebody that he has been linked to the Cardinals for for quite some time, really, even before Nolan, Ar- Nolan Arenado came over to St. Louis, but especially after, because Cardinal fans everywhere, even me to to an extent, really wanted Trevor Story to be a St. Louis Cardinal. And I did a lot of episodes this off season, just thinking. Is he really a fit? Is he somebody that, that, that truly fits in this lineup? Is, does he fit on the roster? Does it make sense to get another right-handed bat? Is he that much better of a shortstop? Is he that good of a shortstop as everybody says he is and things of that nature? And it's easy to sit here now and say, oh, glad the Cardinals didn't get him for, for X, Y, Z reasons. But the contract that he signed, it's one that the, the Cardinals were, were never going to, to even come close to, to matching or to... Uh, to, to offering, if I had to, to imagine. But he signed a six-year, $140 million contract, one of the top average annual, value, average annual values, excuse me, among any contracts out there, especially among middle infielders, especially with the other moves the Cardinals made this offseason with the extensions and the other signings, uh, Corey Dickerson being one of them. Just, you know, the most recent one, excuse me. That was never going to be a contract the Cardinals signed. And I do think, and this might just be one of those, you know, there's an argument to be said where, oh, you're just saying that because you're salty you didn't get them. But I truly believe that the Boston Red Sox overpaid for 
um, overpaid for Trevor Story. That is a hefty, hefty, hefty contract for Trevor Story. I hope it works out. I think he's a, I think he's a great player. I think he's a good shortstop. Uh, but lo- losing out on him from a Cardinals perspective, it truly is okay. So now, instead of lamenting and getting upset that the Cardinals didn't spend money, that the Cardinals didn't get Story, they didn't go to the big fish and all that stuff, which, I again, I understand. But it was reported in the offseason. I did an episode on the offseason covering this as well, a couple of them, in fact, about Paul DeYoung. Now, he went to Matt Holiday, went to a couple other players, got new hitting instructor, new philosophy, new routines, how he's trying to improve his swing and prove that he's the player that, that everybody thought he was when he first came up. Cardinals are going to roll the dice with him. The battle does look to be between Sosa and DeYoung. Uh, Sosa filled in nicely last year, as I've talked about a lot. But Paul DeYoung, in my opinion, is going to be the opening day shortstop for the St. Louis Cardinals, barring injury. They're not going to add one. They're not going to add any bats to this lineup unless it's an Albert Pujols for nostalgia's sake or if it's a left-handed bat to DH. But Paul DeYoung is going to be the opening day shortstop. And some of you might be growling and grumbling and saying, oh, why this? Why? He's had so many chances, yada, yada, yada. And I get it. it, it it's, it's frustrating to, to, to a degree. But I think with, with the injuries he dealt with last year, and it, it might be easy for, for to, to say it now, but I do believe that this is, gonna, this is going to be the make or break year for Paul DeYoung. And he's got to produce this year if he wants to keep the job long term or if he wants another contract extension, if he wants to get paid somewhere else, whatever it might be. Because the Cardinals have some middle infield coming up to the system. Nolan Gorman's an option because I think in a somewhat of an ideal world, now with, with the way Trevor Story has gone, uh, t- the Trevor Story situation has gone, now I think you come to the, the the pathway of Nolan Gorman being your everyday second baseman next year and Tommy Edmond moving over to shortstop and being your full-time shortstop, which is a very real possibility even this year. Because I think if Paul DeYoung struggles too much, And Nolan Gorman, you know, is just unbelievable in in AAA if he starts the year AAA, which there's still a possibility he starts in the major leagues. But I see a situation, I see a scenario where Paul DeYoung starts as the area shortstop on opening day. He struggles. You have Nolan Gorman tearing it up in the minor leagues because he's close to being ready. But with the way the rosters shake out, he just let's just say he didn't make it. Okay. I see a situation where instead of going on Mundo Sosa at shortstop, I see the Cardinals calling up Nolan Gorman, giving him everyday reps at second base, moving Edmund over to shortstop. That's a real possibility. Another possibility, maybe, in, in all these trades we're talking about, maybe Paul DeYoung gets traded somewhere. He's, he's, and he's trade bait, and the Cardinals go with Edmund at short, Gorman at second on opening day anyways, regardless, because they think Nolan Gorman's right which is not saying that he's not ready, but I'm just saying that they, they would obviously have to think that. The shortstop position was the one position in my mind, defensive position, that the Cardinals could have added to, could have improved this offseason with the reports that were going around, with who they were linked to, with who the free agents were, with how the trade market shook out. Because you're, obviously, you're, you're not getting a catcher. Yadier Molina is your catcher. He's, re- he's reporting to spring training camp today, by the way. You've got Paul Goldschmidt at first. Edmund is going to be your second baseman, that unless he gets hurt or Gorman outperforms in every every way. But Edmund's got that pretty much on lock. Nolan Arenado is your starting third baseman, period, right? And your outfield set in O'Neill, Bader, and Carlson. So shortstop was the one question mark position for me, because even if Edmund does struggle, even if Edmund does get hurt, then there's your spot to call Nolan Gorman up. Because ever since the Cardinals acquired Nolan Arenado. Gorman has been working at second base because that's how he's going to get major league playing time. Simple. So am I disappointed the Cardinals didn't get story? After seeing the price tag, no. Am I disappointed they didn't improve the shortstop position? I don't know if disappointed is the right word, um, but but there is kind of, kind of an uneasy feeling about it that the Cardinals um, could have improved there but didn't. And... It is what it is at, at a certain point, but like I said, that was the one position I thought the Cardinals were going to improve on, uh, defensively speaking and, and offensively speaking. The reason I don't say the DH is because I felt like 
they had way too many internal options at the designated hitter spot. Um, you know, if they were able to get a Schwarber, that would have been obviously a plus. Um, if they were able to get an Albert to, to platoon, I still think that I still think they could platoon Albert and Corey Dickerson, to be honest with you guys. Uh, but I don't know if that's a realistic possibility or not. But the, the, the shortstop losing out on story again, just kind of finish it up. It's it's not a huge loss for me. It, it's not like you're, you're losing out on, you know, somebody that, that you were linked to the whole year or somebody that um, that you could have matched a price contract to. No, it just is what it is at a certain point. And with the, the signings they've made, I think the offense is in a decent spot, um, especially I, I was pro Corey Dickerson. Again, if that's the last move they make, then yeah, that's probably not a great move. And you've got some things to talk about and some things to improve upon. But with Corey Dickerson, he could be a nice depth piece. But the offense right now, is it lacking a little oomph? Maybe at a couple spots. But overall, I think the offense is in, is in a good spot. I want to hear what you guys think. Let me know on what you think about the pitching situation, on the injuries. Let me know what you think about the, the losing out on Trevor's story, the offense. Drop a comment in the YouTube section. They were flying in yesterday. I appreciate that. Or Thursday and Friday, excuse me. DM me on Twitter at LJ Fastball. DM the show on Twitter or Instagram at LO underscore Cardinals. You can also email the show anytime at LockedOnCards at gmail.com. So th- those are the big two news things that I wanted to touch on today. Again, tomorrow we'll talk a little bit about possible trade scenarios. Uh, I'm talking to Jason Burke of Locked On A's. He won't be on, but I'll be talking to him about that, that aspect of it. Uh, to finish up the show in the third segment, I want to talk about spring training because the Cardinals have had two games underneath their belts. Talk about my, my thoughts so far, as well as talk about um, the game coming up tonight in which we get to see a Cardinal debut getting the start on the mound tonight. So for all that conversation, stay tuned. But first I want to tell you about the best tasting protein bar in the business. And that is a built bar. Built bar is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. And they also have other incredible Options such as a Built Bar Puff. Puffs are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. You heard that right. They're fluffy, marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar. They are a treat. And just like Built Bar products, they're covered 100% in real chocolate. Built Bars are low-calorie, high-protein. You can replace your candy bar with these because they are better tasting and more healthy. Because most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, 17 grams of protein, Compare that to your average candy bar, usually about 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, dozens of net carbs. Built Bar is better in every way. So don't wait. Go to Built.com right now. Check out all the amazing offers as well as all the amazing flavors available for you to try. Use promo code LOCKED15 at checkout, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, to get 15% off your order. Once again, promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. Obviously, as you know, spring training is upon us. And spring training is a time that that a lot of times you can only look at the the box score. You can only look at the stat sheet. Uh, Obviously, there's video of the last couple games the Cardinals have played. And yet it's a time that that stats really don't mean much to certain players. For example, if Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado, again, they they haven't because they already have hits, but if they were to combine to go hitless, the rest of spring training, do you think they're losing their jobs? No. If Lars Nukbar or Juan Yepes go hitless this entire spring training, do you think they're breaking camp with the team? Likely not. It's the it, you, you can't just look at a box score and say, oh, this person's doing well, this person's not. They're going to make the team. They're not. It's more complex than that. Especially when, when you know, if you're looking at Paul Goldschmidt hitting four home runs uh, in, in a week, but every time he had a home run, he was facing a minor league pitcher, do those home runs really mean much? It's a balancing act of everything. It's a fascinating way to to interpret a baseball game. But there are some stats I want to go through and some names I want to talk about in the first couple of games that the Cardinals have been impressive with. The first one, the Cardinals uh, won 4-2 to two against the Houston Astros. Cardinals only got three hits. The Astros got five hits total. Um, one of those hits was an Andrew Kisner home run. And it's a great swing. And I, I really do think I tweeted this out. I don't think the Cardinals should be overly worried about the post Molina era because you've got Andrew Kisner, who I think is going to be solid if he gets regular playing time. And Ivan Herrera is still a highly touted prospect that I think is going to do great things. So that was a great 
moment that the Cardinals had this weekend, as well as you saw Aaron Brooks just simply dominate. And again, it was late in the game. Was he facing um, uh, the, the A Houston Astros lineup, the, the A-plus lineup? No, but he was still able to strike out five batters over two innings, looked nasty, looked filthy. So that's a good thing. Aaron Brooks, somebody that, that can provide bullpen depth for the St. Louis Cardinals. Again, this is why the moves were made for depth and for other options coming out of that bullpen. Adam Wainwright was solid. Henesis Cabrera solid. TJ McFarland a quiet inning as well. Uh, Matthew Lieberberg was the only one that, that faltered in that game to give up any runs. And then the Cardinals come out and beat the Mets yesterday as well. I talked about the Dylan Carlson absolute bomb. If he could find some, that, that power stroke consistently, I think that that watch out. I'll say that. If he finds that power stroke and not just the double stroke, if he's able to hit 25, 30 home runs, especially if he finds power from the right side, he's already deadly enough on the right side. Whew. Better watch out. Lars Newtbar also had himself a day yesterday at the DH position, having a triple on another hit as well. Pitching-wise, you saw a lot of good performances. At least I did. Drew Verhagen, like I mentioned, looked filthy, striking out three different Mets players. Whitgren with a perfect inning and a strikeout as well. Zach McAllister didn't impress all that much, uh, but Miles Michaelis got, got a couple innings in there as well to start. So, in my opinion, it's still very early, but we're seeing good things out of the Cardinals early in spring. Especially from, from the pitching staff, which, like I talked about in the first segment, is going to need to show they can withstand these injuries. And so far, they have. Again, two games into swing training, I get it. But the point is, there are some positive things we've seen out of spring training. And hopefully that continues tonight when 5.05 Central Time, the Cardinals take on the Washington Nationals. Uh, Steven Matz will be making his Cardinal spring debut. Uh, it'll be broadcasting on KMOX. Um, you can, it'll be on Nationals television. I think that might be an MLB.TV free game of the week as well. I'm not sure. Uh, but I'm looking forward to, to looking video and to seeing what Steven Matz is able to do. Right now, to date, he's the Cardinals' biggest offseason acquisition. I think he's going to work out great. I, I think that at the end of the season, we're going to be able to say his ground ball rate was the reason he is successful in St. Louis because of how good that defense is behind him. So uh, the, the pre-log. We'll start today for Stephen Matz. He starts his spring training with the St. Louis Cardinals. So that's going to do it for today's episode. Be sure to tune back in tomorrow when I look at what a trade might look like for the St. Louis Cardinals to get a Sean Manaya or to get a Frankie Montas, as well as break down other news and notes from the Cardinals camp. Talk about offense a little bit more, but we're really going to be talking about what a trade might look like because I would really, really, really like to see one. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at LJ Fastball. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen of the day. Be sure to make Locked On MLB your second listen with Paul Francis Sullivan, but be sure to call him Sully as he brings you his unique perspective on the major leagues, both past and present. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts, just like Locked On Cardinals. Whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on the go, listening in at home, listening wherever on your favorite podcasting platform, thanks for tuning in each and every day. And once again, we're back to five episodes a week. So I'll be back tomorrow talking more Cardinal baseball. Be sure to stay safe, everybody. Stay tuned. Excuse me. Stay safe, stay well, and have a fantastic rest of your day.